Hey ladies and gents and welcome to the Controlled Interest Gamecast where we talk about video games and everything happening in the industry, episode 104. I am your host Jared Weich, alongside me as always is Jordan. Jared, it's great to see you again back on the podcast. How are you doing today? Uh, doing good. I like I like that I said as always and you weren't here last week, but you know, most of the time. Right, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I'm still trying this new uh, introducing Jared thing that I'm doing. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Um... It's weird saying my last name. I don't say yours or Dom's last name just because I don't know if, A, you guys are comfortable with it, you know? And I just don't like saying people's full names in general. Uh, oh, just I mean, go- I'm comfortable with it. If I'm having shit on the internet, you know, that's... It's kind of goofy to think that that's not going to be a, a Well, thing, plus, you know? your, uh, your name has very good alliteration to it. So just, I think it's yeah, a pretty good name to say. I don't know if I'm a fan of that part. Yeah, that, the alliteration? Yeah. Uh, well, the funny thing is, is that my entire my media family, so me, and my mom, my dad, and my sister, all have first names that start with J, and I don't think it was a thing that was planned necessarily, because my name wasn't initially going to be Jared; it was going to be something else, um, and it just ended up being Jared. So, like, yeah, my sister's name is Jasmine, my mom's name is Julie, and my dad's name is James. So it's all J's. Um, but it, the the traditional like weird family stuff ends there. Like we don't all have like the same middle initial or anything, you know, uh, right which bunch. is good. Yeah. Um, in terms of what we've been playing, um, pretty I wouldn't say a slow week for me because I was able to get in some gaming, but not as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. Um, mm-hmm. So I really wanted to start Rise of the Tomb Raider this week because I wanted to I want to play that game and finish it before the new one comes out. But I'm not going to be getting same. the new one necessarily at launch, but same. I'm still planning on playing it right before it comes out. Oh. Um, before the gauntlet of the fall with Spider-Man and everything else. Um, Spider-Man. So What's I didn't that? have... Huh? September 7th? September 7th, yeah. 20s? September 7th, 7th and then two weeks later on my birthday is the Spyro remaster. So it's just like nice. one after another. Uh, yeah, so I didn't get a chance to play that. But I did get a chance to play more Octopath Traveler. You were on last mm. week, but I was talking about how I started it, got 10 minutes in, and then I just got busy with everything else, and I wasn't able to get back to it. Luckily, Ooh. this week, I was able to put in, like, two more hours. Um, first up, before I start, did you get, did you pick up Octopath? No, I've, I'm definitely waiting on it. It's kind of like you were talking about with Tomb Raider, which I'm also like with Tomb Raider, but <laughs> uh, I'm certainly going to play it, though. I'm, yeah. I'm... I got plenty of games to play. And, exactly. Uh, it's I'm sure it's great. Is so, it great? I'll get to that. Uh, and the short answer, yes. <laughs> that was a weird like lead-in of, like, I'll tell you how bad it is later. Um, I told what? Dom last week that I was actually sitting there debating of getting Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker or Octopath, right? Word. Captain Toad is a game that I never had a chance to play. It's a game I'm super interested in and I've wanted to buy ever since I they, they announced that it was going to get ported. I wasn't going to spend $100 in a day, especially when I'm going to be having to make a big purchase like the PS4 here in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of being responsible, obviously, with my expendable income. So I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to purchase. And for me, I was like, here's the thing. It's not necessarily the zeitgeist of talking in the moment about Octopath being out, but I've I've waited for so long for Octopath since that announcement that the urge to play it the day it came out was more more for me than the urge to get Captain Toad right away, if that made sense. Like, I could have easily yeah. waited for a sale, but since I was going to buy a game and I already made up my mind I was going to buy one of them, that's the one that I just felt I wanted to play more, and it's perfectly fine. Um, yeah. And I didn't want to go and buy Captain Toad and then be like, this is great, I'm having a great time, but now I have to kind of wait for Octopath, you know, or, so. I'm still kind of that way with not having Captain Toad, but it is what it is. It's a game that came out years ago, I can wait a little bit longer. Um... So I've been playing Octopath. I actually started with Cyrus Albright. Obviously, there's eight different characters you can choose. And I started with Cyrus, and he's the Scholar. And the reason I chose him is because his battle ability is uh, to point out weaknesses. So he can point out weaknesses of enemies. And I thought that's very important, very huge. Like, knowing the weaknesses of the people you're battling is very important are to, all, like, the way... Are all the battle... Whatever, like, are all those special powers stat-related? Um, what do you mean, like, uh... For each individual character? So, so you're or saying, some like... some of them actually, like, inflict damage? That special uh, power that you Good question. I don't know. I didn't... 
I don't know. That's a very good question. I've only started with him, and his doesn't. Stump, yeah. Yeah. Um, and his out-of-battle ability is scrutinize. So he basically pulls information out of people, um, which is really, I really like good. That. And uh, his story's really cool. So, I don't know. Are you going to start with Cyrus when you eventually get it? There's eight I different have characters. No, I have, yeah, I have not looked at the characters at all. I'll probably just wait till I jump in. So this isn't spoiler at all. It's at the very beginning of the game. But the way his starts is that you work... At this place that's basically the Grand Archives, right? You work at this... You, you're you a scholar. scholar. Yeah, you're a scholar in this city of knowledge. And basically what happens is you find out that there's an ancient tome in the local... In the <laughs> library and that you didn't know was there. So you go to f f you know rent it out and you find out that somebody had stolen it. And this is a cool part is you get to the... I don't know if it's specifically for him, but he's very good at deducing things. And Sherlock Holmes is like one of my favorite fictional characters. So you get a little bit of that Sherlock Holmes vibe of figuring out who stole the tome. And there's actually like when you finish it, who and there's, stole the tome? There's four different suspects, and you have to be like, well, who who did it? And if you pick one, it'll be like your deducing was wrong. It was just actually possibly these other group of people. Um, you end up finding out that the Grand Scholar, the Headmaster, I believe, is what they call him. He isn't the type of person who believes that knowledge should be shared with the world. He sees it as ish. You should hold on to it because it's valuable, right? We can't share our knowledge with everyone else because it's what makes us worth anything. So that's kind of where you butt heads with him, um, because Cyrus is the type of person who believes that knowledge is power, but you should share that power with people, right? Sure. Um, it, it's very interesting. The the beginning of it. I don't want to spoil too much, like I said, because if you pick Cyrus, I want you to experience that for yourself. But I literally got to the point where they're like. The doors are open from the, the starting city. Go have an adventure. And at that point, from what I've read with the tutorial pop-ups, is that I can go and try to recruit the other travelers now, too. I don't know how many of them or how it's gated. Like, you know, if I get yeah. one, maybe I have to do a certain bit before I can get a third one. Um, but I'm loving it. Really fun. I love that talking to each of the, like, citizens, whether they have anything interesting for you, can lead to hidden items. So for my ability to scrutinize, I talk to this random civilian, and if I scrutinize them, they might not have any valuable information, but I unlock a secret item kind of near them-ish, and it'll, it'll pop up with, like, a little blinking, like, blue light, and you go and investigate it, and there haven't been any crazy items, but it's been a couple of, like... Items that I could sell, right? So it's like old garbage or like this old coin or something. But also so there's like, a little side quest. Exactly. It's not even a quest really. Like you talk to the person and then you mini quest. You unlock the location of the yeah, the hidden item and you just have to find it. And um, like I said, some of them are just like these small garbs you can sell. Uh, some small of the other cost. ones are um, HP potions or SP potions. SP is the magic in the game. Uh, the magic or however you want to look at it. Um, but yeah, it's really cool for me. Uh, with Cyrus, you start off with a flame spell, an ice spell, and then your normal staff spell, right? And you unlock um, JP, which are basically your upgrade points. And when you use those, you can pick a certain ability. So I had 35, and every time you spend to unlock an ability, the next one is going to be more expensive than the, the first one you purchase, right? Because they don't want yeah. you to like just farm and then buy all of them. Um, so th the first ability I purchased was actually a lightning spell. And I had the choice of either going for that or the other ability I wanted to get was one that would automatically show me one of their weaknesses no matter what. Because enemies will have more than one weakness. They usually have like a bar underneath that tells you how many different weaknesses. You just have to figure out what they are. And for me, I automatically get some of those unlocked because of his abilities. And uh, one of the abilities was to automatically unlock an additional one as well as uh, do additional damage with your staff. Um, so I decided to go the elemental route just because I'd like to have those elemental abilities off the bat uh, based on the type of enemies I run into. Um, but yeah, the game is beautiful as expected. The battle system is really cool. It, uh, it's partially turn-based, but it feels a lot like Child of Light. So it's like they have, okay. like, the okay. ticker on the top, but it's not active time. It still shows you as the turns pass by, so it's a little bit of a mixture of, like, traditional turn-based with a little bit of that Child of Light active time turn-based There's so many different takes on that right now. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'm loving it, though. Um, my The only complaint I've heard from people is that it gets a little bit grindy later on, but playing Pokemon... It, 
all of the years I have, I know about grindiness in RPG, so that doesn't bother me. I love the way battles look in this game, so like looking at them is not going to be an issue for me. Uh, a lot of the enemy designs are really cool, and the music, Jordan, is it's Italian Kiss. Ooh, it's, it's really good. Um, that's the spicy meat of all. It's very authentic to what you'd expect from a game that looks like this. You know what I mean? So that's and what it, I was going to say, is the grindy part just sounds like authentic as well. If you have a throwback JRPG and what do you you play all eight of these campaigns if you want? Is it yeah, you can characters? play all eight. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, of course they're gonna have some grindy parts. So yeah, that's yeah. Uh, other than that, the only thing I watched of importance, I'm trying to think if I've watched anything new. I'm excited for. Uh, Mission Impossible. Um, though I'm not a huge action movie guy, I just like the Mission Impossible movies for some reason. We'll get to that at the end of the show. Uh, oh, the thing I did watch is Last Chance U. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, Jordan. I know you're not a huge sports guy, so I doubt it. Um, I am aware of it. Yeah, so it's a series on Netflix that follows junior col- a specific junior college. Uh, and the premise of the show is that these top-ranked junior colleges are places where guys who went to a Division One school and had issues of maybe... Um, failing their classes or having breaking a drug policy or all these different issues maybe they had some like emotional issues and they couldn't really deal with the the system in place for the d1 college whatever it happens to be um they go to these junior colleges for a year or two years and try to redeem themselves become better people better students better football players and they try to get another d1 scholarship so they can pursue their nfl dreams the problem with it is these juco colleges the first, the first two seasons uh, followed Eastern Mississippi and uh, their coach, and the third season is a new coach at a new college in Independence, Kansas. So these very small towns. So you have the Eastern dynamic. Eastern Mississippi. You have these kids dealing with the dynamic of going to these big D1 universities. Like some of them are from like Florida State, right? It's like Tallahassee, uh. a party place, uh, being treated like stars, and they go to these little rinky-dink towns in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and they have to deal with Eastern that. Eastern Mississippi Honey Badgers. The big thing is that these coaches are the loudest, most arrogant, obnoxious dudes you'll ever hear on a football field. Like, they're they're the type of coach, for me personally, I did play football in high school and stuff, are the type of coach I personally don't respond to. They're the ones that'll yell in your face and call you, call you words and stuff, but they're they're kind of doing like uh, reverse psychology, sort of. That's not the type of like oh, coach yeah. I respond to. I respond more to the ones that are like, I don't talk to you like a human being. I don't know, <laughs> but I find it very entertaining because of the human stories in it. Right, the first two seasons, one of the side characters was uh, one of the counselors that worked at the school that worked hand in hand with the football players, helping them come to terms with being away from their family, having them come to terms with like, you need to pass your classes. Because a lot of these guys are from, like, inner-city schools where they don't necessarily learn education properly. They come from families that, you know, there's a lot of drug and gang violence. And the counselor was very helpful, and uh, she was, like, a standout, right? Because she was there to try to help these kids. In the third season, it's not a counselor, it's a teacher. And she's a black woman, and her approach to it is teaching these... the a lot Because a lot of them are black men, right? Teaching them that they have a lot more value to them than just football. And uh, it's 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 a very good show. I would recommend it to people who aren't even really interested in football. Um, You're like, no, nah, fuck that. It's all about the game. Let's go. Yeah. I just love that it balances. If you're into football, they show a lot of the games and they show a lot of that stuff. Um, but it's even with just like a human drama, human documentary. You know what I mean? Um, really yeah. good. I ran. You know, I've talked about how bad I am at watching things on this on this podcast numerous times. I ran sure. through those eight episodes like in a day and a half, like I just got yeah. hooked. Um, and it's because I, I, a, I love the game of football so much, and it's a series I've loved for so long. Um, so I've been I'll meaning to. Know, I'll let Dom know next week. Yeah, Jared got fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty much it for me. I like I said, I didn't play a whole lot. I didn't watch a whole lot. Uh, I didn't read a whole lot either. There's a bunch of comics that came out that I haven't been able to catch up on. Oh. Uh, Infinity. What is it called? Um, it's called Infinity Something. Number one dropped yesterday. Yeah, uh, Inv- uh, Infinity Wars Prime. Yeah, apparently there's a, something in there that you don't want to get spoiled for you. So I'm trying yeah. to get to that ASAP. 
Um, yeah. That's pretty much it for me. You haven't been on in two weeks. What have you been doing, Jordan? Yeah, so as far as... Uh, I'll just bounce off of the Marvel stuff that you just mentioned. Um, I'm not really reading the stuff that's ending the old comics, I guess. I'm just uh, keeping caught up with Fresh Start right now, and I'm not going to keep up with everything. I'm just kind of reading the first couple issues. See what sticks um, to you. That's how I'm managing yeah, it. Yeah. I'm reading it, and then I'm like, what do I want to wait for the actual like paper, uh, like the trades to come out? And then right. what am I going to stick with issue to issue, and what am I just going to ditch completely? Yeah. I'm really liking Thor. Uh, the Avengers itself is great. Uh, Venom's really cool. Mm. Some of the smaller stuff is... Like, there's nothing bad, but some of it's just more, like, solid. Uh, I would say Cloak and Dagger probably falls in that category. Um, but yeah, there's some cool stuff in there for sure. And then uh, kind of trying to get caught up with DC Rebirth, um, which is another thing, like you were just saying, you kind of have to figure out what's good for you with comics. Um because I am happy with the current state of Rebirth and Fresh Start, where they're releasing a lot fewer comics, but, um, you know, the events is what gets you, and so, like, uh, Justice League versus Suicide Squad, and then, um, Teen Titans, the Lazarus contract. Um, I just started reading, uh, Justice League versus Suicide Squad. And I just finished uh, the Teen Titans stuff uh, with Deathstroke and all that. I'm really liking the Teen Titans book currently. I'm probably 15 or so issues in, maybe 12. And then uh, the Titans itself, which is more college age type uh, Nightwings team, is also really good. Fuck it's gotten that, better. <laughs> yeah, which. Uh, we can, um, let's tangent on that real quick. Um, I think the, I'll talk about Young Justice, Young Justice in a minute, which I'm very excited for in DC's. And on a positive note, (laughs) in terms of Titans talk. Sure, but what about, uh, this Titan show, what do you think? I, we were talking about, uh, Starfire not looking good in the photos. I think she looks way better in what we saw. Of the trailer. Yeah, the funny thing is, so I'll give my I we, me, Dom and I talked about it last week, but Dom I think Dom's out no matter what because Dom's t- totally he he checks out like two f- percent of superhero stuff, you know. Um, Krypton is, I would say, great. And yeah, so, I really want to watch I think Krypton. That's the last one uh, that's come out. So. Um, so my impressions on the Titans trailer. I thought going in, right, just going into the trailer, I was like, I'm probably not going to like the Starfire stuff. And the least of my issues with her outfit has nothing to do with the fact that she, or her look is that she's black. That doesn't matter to me, whatever. She's an alien. She could be whatever color. It's like the the costume design, personally, that I'm not a huge fan of. I still don't like it. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't match I the think character. They still could have, like, they still could have made a diverse choice. And made her more like her comic character, you know? They could have made her, like, a... They could have gotten a Middle Eastern actress or something like that, and then it still would have, you know, filled their diversity quota. Yeah, I just... And it would have looked more like the character with the orange wig or whatever. Yeah, just... it orange That wig. part... Some people are begging on that. That is... I feel sorry for the actress, too, because she had to, like, shut down her Instagram because people are yeah. assholes. Like, that part doesn't bother me. She has I think no... she looks good. I yeah. I think the character looks good. So going going into the trailer, I thought she was going to be my big issue with it. Oh boy, yeah. howdy, was I wrong. Um, so I'll, I'll just go through Batman. it quickly because I, I talked about it a little bit last week. One. So I, wait, did you get fuck Batman spoiled for you? No, no, no. Because I I watched this trailer like ASAP as soon as it dropped. Nice. Yeah. So going I, into I've the been tra- waiting for this show. I didn't think it was going to get made, and they like started getting back into it. Not that long ago, really. And so I'm glad to see it alive. So this trailer starts, once again, I said this before when we saw the set photos, I hate Raven's wig. Like, I just don't like it. And I'm not a wig guy. Like, I'm not somebody who, like, oh, that, I'm not Nick Scarpino, you know? I, I, big wig hasn't gotten a hold of me. Like, I'm not worried about big wig. Um, You're not worried about 
them companies coming in, those corporations, exactly. with their wigs. With their wig agenda. No, but this one yeah. really looks bad to me, <laughs> honestly. Um, the actress, too, is a perfect example of, like, she's doing, like, Kristen Stewart pouty sad, whereas, like, I... For me, Raven is more like Daria gothic sad and depressed, if that makes sense. I don't know if you're familiar with Daria. But like Daria Raven, from The cartoon Daria and stuff. But like Raven has I always have no idea what that is. You don't know what Daria is. It was like a very popular MTV cartoon in the nineties, alongside like Beavis uh-huh. and Butthead and uh Nice. And uh all that stuff, Ren Stimpy and all that. Anyways, she to me she's she's supposed to be more goth sad into this. She's very much like Twilight Kristen Stewart upset which bothers me. I think a lot gotcha. of the dialogue in this is like extra cheesy like ugh. Um, I mean uh, that's where we're at with live action superhero shit. It sucks because uh, I'll get to this in just a second but I've been watching more animated DC stuff which they are just so on point with man. Yeah but um, like. I mean there's, there's they're not the best in the world but they, most of the time they're great movies. And I think people who like the the Arrowverse shows, the CW shows, are okay with yeah, it. For yeah. me, I haven't watched any of those shows. Uh, I have really no interest. I mean, I watched the first episode of Flash, I guess. But, like, yeah. Daredevil Season 1 and Season 2 for uh, Marvel, uh, I for me, didn't have any of this, really. And this is obviously based on the trailer. Anyways, I want to get through this very quickly, like I said. So, Raven didn't like the wig. Don't like a lot of the dialogue in the trailer. I think Robin's costume is dope. Perfect to me. Love his costume. Um, uh, I don't like the way they chose to portray Dick Grayson at all. Um, I know what they're doing. They're starting him as I'm Dick Grayson. I'm tired of Dick Grayson, by the way. I'm tired of Dick Grayson. I'll get to that. Here's the thing. is like, For me, Dick Grayson is the teenage kid. And that's why I love him in Young Justice. And you'll get to Young Justice, obviously, in a bit. I love Dick Grayson as a teenager. They're doing the thing where, like, let's do old Robin. So at the end of the season, cliffhanger, spoiler alert, he's going to be Nightwing. Right? I've that's, never liked... Honestly, I've never, that's where Dick Grayson should be because I'm about some Tim Drake. Yeah. Here's the thing is that I hate that... The whole reason they made him Robin is so they can have the cliffhanger at the end of the season for him to be Nightwing, and that bothers me. Like... Well, for me, for me, if you Robin, no one over the age of eighteen should be in a Robin costume. To me, like that no, just okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It needs to be Tim Drake Red Robin. You can be Red Robin and be like eighteen to twenty five. You know yes, I mean? I'm talking classic Robin suit. You can't be rocking that dude and be eighteen plus. To me, that suit reflects you learning from Batman and being his understudy and trying to figure stuff out. When you get to the point where you're like, fuck Batman, and you're wearing the Robin suit, the classic Robin well, suit. Well, that's the whole story. That's the reason that he's, like, done with Batman. Though. Yeah, but I would, I just, for me, the character needs to be Nightwing then. If he's already at the breaking point where he's saying, fuck Batman, then have him be Nightwing. I just don't like it okay. at all. If we're just going in, I'm going to go in on this real quick because I have other DC stuff that I actually like that I want to talk about. But real Type. Go ahead. I was gonna say is that I'm. I think that they're worried that the CG doesn't look good in this because how the hell are you gonna have Beast Boy not show a transformation? I think they're worried that the CG yeah. doesn't look dope, so they're yeah. they kind of pulled back from the back, trailer. But I thought Starfires looked fine to me. But that was yeah. the one that I thought looked good. It's easier to and do those. Like I said, that's another thing of like the state we're in with these types of shows. You know. Yeah, I just for me. I've never been a fan of, like, older, gritty Titans. I'm, mo- like, I love Teen Titans, you know? So, yeah. like, this is just another, like, this trailer reeked of let's go dark for dark sake, not, oh, what well, we want the, the tone thing, of the... Man. Ugh. It's DC in a it's, nutshell. Okay, so the DC needs to do a better job of defining the whole Titan scenario. Because, and Young Justice suffers from this, because this, I said this in our chat, this should just be a Teen Titan show. Um, so they have the two comics right now, and like I said, Titans is more college-age, Nightwing-led, and the show Titans is closer to Teen Titans, actually, because it's got Beast Boy and Raven and Starfire and Robin. All they're missing is, so, uh, uh, what's his name? Cyborg. Uh, Cyborg, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they should call this Teen Titans, and... They could do their own little Arrowverse thing and then have Titans, which is once Robin becomes Nightwing, he hops over like Morgan in Walking Dead. But Exactly. 
DC just needs to do a better job defining Titans because, like I said, Young Justice should not be called Young Justice. It should, even though that is a comic series, they in the show they just call it the team. It's like no, the Justice League. So I'll bridge into Young Justice now. The Justice League is all up in that show. It's like so the Justice League is teaming up with the team. I'm like, just call them the Teen Titans. You know? Yeah. Um, and th- I think that's the thing, too. The reason I'm so upset by the Titans trailer is that I think it's partially because I don't have any interest in a lot of the live-action D- DC stuff in terms of the TV shows because they just look very corny to me, if I'm being quite honest. Yeah, and, sure. And this is like, let's go dark but still keep all of the corn. Like, <laughs> And I've, I'm yeah. coming off of the high of finishing the first season of Young Justice, you know what I mean? And though it's a right. cartoon, that, that show deals with a lot of adult tones. Oh, and, dude. Yeah, that's the thing is people disrespect anime, and I'm not about it because you can do... Obviously, the Japanese have shown it time and time again. Like, you can do so much with animation. And a big thing I realized uh, with both Young Justice and the movies that I was rewatching, which was... it's They don't really have a name for it. It's like the Batman and Robin trilogy of animated DC movies. Yeah. Um, so, it's... Son of Batman, which introduces Damian Wayne, um, and then um, Batman versus Robin, where obviously they're fighting, and they also do the Court of Owls, and then there is Batman Bad Blood, where they introduce Batwoman, um, Kate Kane, and they're such good movies, dude, and I watch them as basically like a mini series. Um, cause the runtime between the three without watching the whole credits is, you know, just over, it's probably about three and a half hours. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. I'm really enjoying Young Justice season one. And I've realized that they're animated by Japanese and Korean people. And they're fucking anime. DC's been doing this with these animated films for years now. I mean, probably close to a decade at this point. Uh, probably seven plus years where since the new 52 stuff where uh, especially the fight scenes in in the Batman movies the hand to hand combat is so great because it's done by basically anime teams and of course it's like the whole Avatar Last Airbender situation where it can't be called anime because it's I don't know American properties or who knows you know written by Americans or uh, executive produced by Americans, but it's animated in the anime, pretty much current anime style, and um, they're both really good. I mean, obviously, I've talked a lot about the DC animated movies, but um, like you were saying, Young Justice deals with a bunch of real shit. Um, it's really well animated. Uh, fight scenes are great. Action's great. I really dig the team. I was talking about the voice cast earlier with you. Uh, Nolan North as Superboy, um, Jesse McCartney as Robin, uh, Dick Grayson. See, this is weird, right? Because Wally West and Dick Grayson are like really kind of kids, like fifteen-year-olds. I think they said. Uh, Robin is thirteen, and uh, uh, Kid Flash is fifteen. Yeah, and so in the comics, those two same guys are in the Titans comic. And they're, you know, probably 23, 25-ish. Um, so this kind of, like, goes... is pushing it back for me. It's weird. Because I'm used to Kid Flash, Wally West being black in the New Teen Titans with Damian Wayne. Uh, it's, a, it's a fucking... Well, that's not... That's story. not... That's a different Wally West. That's Wally West Jr. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, two different universes... Well, he's... It's just, like... Let's make it confusing. That's all it is. Yeah. Sure, that's definitely... I'm getting into some comic book bullshit, but it's just a different era than I'm used to dealing with, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, Bruce Greenwood is also in the cast. He's uh, an actor that I'm sure you'd know if you saw him. He's in a bunch of different movies, and he does Batman. He's done Batman in some of the movies, and he's becoming one of my favorite... Uh, animated Batman. So, uh, really enjoying that. Isn't and, Aqualad voiced uh, by the guy who does Samurai Jack, the former Mad TV guy? What's his name? 
Aqualad is voiced by the dude who does Cyborg in Teen Titans, dude. I thought he was voiced by... What's the name of the guy who does Samurai Jack? He's a very famous voice no, actor, no, no. the black guy. You're thinking of Phil Lamar? This guy yeah. is... I guess it's Kari Payton. This is also... Oh, that's uh, the guy from Walking Dead. Um, um, yeah. It's, uh, it's Tiger Ezekiel. Dude. He's, yeah, there you go. And uh, he's great as Aqualad. He's been great as Cyborg forever. Um, I thought he was a solid Ezekiel. Uh, spoilers, I guess. Uh, wait, he hasn't died in the show, has he? <laughs> no, he hasn't, no. Spoilers for the comic, I guess. Spoilers <laughs> for the comic, I guess. I, I knew um, how he passed away. I It's crazy, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad I didn't spoil it for you, at least. But anyways. Um, yeah, I'm definitely into the DC shit right now. I'm into the comic shit, too. You know, just Marvel's... Um, they don't have the animated shit for me to watch. So that's why I've been watching so much DC. But also, it's time to catch up on Young Justice Season 3 on this DC streaming service. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Um, and it looks like this whole voice cast is doing their thing. Oh, Black Canary is uh, Vanessa Marshall, I think. She's, you know, uh, General Sandula on Star Wars Rebels. She's... Uh, fucking Gamora on Guardians of the Galaxy animated series. Um, she's a great voice actress, so yeah. Um, Just, outside uh, of Young Justice, outside of uh, that, did you play anything before we move on? To I have this? not played much. Yeah, that's why I've spent most of my time talking about comics and animated shit because uh, I really have not played much. If you want anything, to talk about? You want to talk about something though that relates to what you've been playing? Correct, yes. Um, not much. Okay, not as much uh, what I've been playing, but what I've been watching. I mentioned the... Uh, I said I was going to do this part last because I was going to bridge into it and it didn't work at all. <laughs> I was talking about the Batman and Robin trilogy of movies, the animated ones. Yeah, the Damien and Batman one. trilogy. Yeah, the uh, Bad Blood, the last one, introduces uh, Batwoman Kate Kane, and I was like, holy shit. So everyone wants uh, Rocksteady's next game to be Batman Beyond, which would be fucking dope. But what if it's a different black and red Bat family warrior and uh, Rocksteady's next game is Batwoman? That'd be pretty dope. I mean, because like, the full female protagonist thing is really... Um... I, I think it's doing well right now, and I think right. having a female-led... Exactly. What was the last female-led superhero game? Ooh. Like, we're talking big one. We're talking, like, Spider-Man level. Well, not even Spider-Man, but you can even name, Arkham like, maybe, level. like, a double-A, but what was the last female-led superhero game? Yeah, I mean, you can... There's games where you can make one, you know, like uh, Saints Row. But you know what I'm talking about. Thing. Yeah, yeah, not that, yeah. though. I'm talking about, like, the, the you know... The titular character, Shit. maybe not even titular, but like you know. Uh, well, well, uh, I would count first light. I would count first light. Yeah, the other one I would count is and Control. Partially, light. the new game that's coming out from Remedy. Oh, don't even get me started. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I think that's a cool idea. Um, it, it'd be very interesting. Part of me really doesn't think that they're doing a Batman game, and I know that sounds dumb because it's like, well, they do Batman yeah. great. I, and I don't know if it's Superman, because I could easily see them... That was their project that they were working on, then it got cancelled, right? I could easily see that happen, too. I um, really think that's uh, WB Montreal. Yeah. I, it's, I'm convinced. The, the one thing that bothered me is when we heard that it was possibly going to be a Damian Wayne game, and I'm like, ugh. Out of the three, so if you pitched me Batwoman game, Batman Beyond game, Damian game... The one I'd be least excited for is Damien, <laughs> you know? Nothing against okay, the character you know necessarily, about, but it's like... Uh, do you know about, like, Apocalypse Damien? Uh, no. Not familiar. So he turns into, like, the Punisher. Batman. Interesting. Still... Yeah. And it's uh, yeah. like Gotham's on fire type shit. Yeah, but you're, if you're telling me, give, give me Damien Wayne, even if that though that sounds really cool, or Batman Beyond, come on now. <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if that's what we get, I could see it being totally awesome still. 
Yeah, I'm not saying it would be bad. I think Rock City makes great games, but it's not personally what, like, I'd be like, hell yeah, but I would have, the Batman Beyond rumor is pretty cool, you know? Um, also, question for you. I have a question for you, because you've played all of the Arkham games, obviously. Um, yes. Was At any point in any of them, could you don the animated series suit? Oh, my God, dude. They have so many suits. Yes. The, the classic, like, gray, you could don that one? The gray and blue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I cool. think. <clears throat> I would say I'm like 99% sure Arkham City. No, I I feel like I'm 100% Arkham City and Arkham Knight on that, probably. Cool. Probably. The Batman know, idea is interesting. There's Batman Beyond. I've played Batman Beyond in Arkham Knight. I would love a Bat Family sure. game, like where you can, you can take a hold of. So. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't. I was just going to say the way I got uh, Batwoman was because they did the Batgirl DLC for Arkham Knight and it go it works, you know. I mean, you can, you know, do a different red-headed female lead for a game and it man, be really fucking dope. Batgirl I would be more into than Batwoman specifically for I like that character a little bit more and I love Babstar's interpretation of the character, like I, I just love the way she yeah. she draws her, and I like the she's purple really suit personally. Cool. She's really cool, but for an action game, I think Batwoman is actually cooler. I think she's more of a badass. I guess I, I think it also comes down to the type of your core demographic, right? I think more mature audiences would probably dig Batwoman more, but I think if you're skewing younger, I think the the pop of like a Batgirl suit could could do a little bit different. The purple, yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting though. I like the idea. Um, that's something that nobody's presented before, and I think it's very viable with like Tomb Raider and all these games where it's like, no, you can have a strong female protagonist and it'll sure. sell well. Like, I think sure. if you announced a Batwoman game, I think people would be stoked, right? Um, but tell me a little bit more about your Bat Family game because that's what I'm really interested in. I would love that. So the way I would pitch a Bat Family game is your core character is Batman. In order to sell a, a Batman game, you need to have Batman be the centralized character, at least the character you start the game with, right? So he doesn't need to be a character you control the entire time, but to get people in, you got it. You got to so, control Batman, right? If we're doing this through Rocksteady, I guess it would be like a Batman Arkham game, and then you would play several characters. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's kind of what you do with the DLC, like Arkham City. You play. Robin, voiced by Troy Baker. I, I guess I want it more interwoven into like the entire narrative from beginning to end, sure, as opposed sure, to like sure. add-on yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think you could easily do it in a way that like Batman gets. Obviously, it had to be very clever writing because Batman doesn't easily just get caught. But something happens to Batman. Maybe he doesn't even get caught. Maybe it's ambiguous. Like you don't know what exactly happens to Batman, but he's gone. Right? Like you play the first two yeah. hours with Batman, some shit goes down. Then you see the cutscene of the like the Bat Family meeting up, and they're like, "Where's Bruce? What happened to Bruce?" It's like, and they're like freaking out because obviously, how does Batman just disappear? You know what I mean? Like, what right, happened? Right. And I think that's where so, it's kind of coming together, and they're like, "Well, we got to figure this out." You have a different skill set than I do, and then that's where you start controlling them. I would even love the option of like some some missions are set where like you have to be this specific person of the Bat Family, but other ones it's like. Depending on the skill set you like to play as, who would you rather Side go quests. in as? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, um, have you played through Arkham Knight? No, I'm still like two hours in. Mm, maybe more than that, maybe like four hours in. So then you've had your first encounter with Nightwing. Uh, yeah. So basically if that was happening the whole game with different characters, except uh, Batman's not there. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it doesn't even need to be... I mean, as blas as blasphemous as this is for, like, a Rock City game, maybe it doesn't necessarily even need to be, like, complete open world. Like, I'd be very interested to see if they did it in a more, like, Uncharted Tomb Raider sense. Um, I would still more be down with open Raider. world. Uncharted but... is just... The way they do their open areas is just garbage. You would not believe. Once you actually play this shit, you'll be like, <laughs> why does anyone call this an open area? It's like a PS2-type open area. Yeah, I got you. Um, but I'd, I'd just be really interested in that because you get the family dynamic, obviously. Um, I think playing through a Batman game without Batman uh, is really interesting. I would love if, like, so, like, two hours after Batman disappears, you control all these other characters, but they're 
there there's moments where like Robin or somebody finds maybe a tape or something and that's how you get to sections where you play as Batman or if it's like you actually are you view footage of previous encounters that you never played as in the Arkham series but there are things that actually happen with Batman maybe between games right and that's how you control Batman as well throughout the game so you're not controlling him in active time but you do get to have these flashbacks where you get to control Batman because you need to toe the line of introducing people to playing as new characters but you still need to let them play as Batman here and there you know what I mean and I think clever right. spacing and game design can really help you with that um I, I, I would like to say that uh, I can't remember the dude's name, but his interpretation of Scarecrow in Arkham Knight is just fucking fantastic. I think it's my favorite Scarecrow period. A uh, question for you: Has anybody outside of like the Batman verse uh, cameoed in a in an Arkham game? Hero wise, like a hero, like a obviously a you Superman like or a Shazam Superman. or like a anything. Yeah. Um. Because obviously there's Catwoman, but that's Batverse. Like, there's... I'm talking about there's Uncatwoman no, isn't here. There's no there. Green Arrow. Yeah. None of them? All of Arkham. That's tough. I think it's all Bat stuff. Because they've alluded to other heroes and like, a bigger... Like, they've said stuff like a Metropolis paper and stuff, there's right? like... Yeah, there's, like, a Lex Luthor voicemail in Arkham Knight. Yeah. Um, I would... Man, if they did, like, a Teen Titans game or a Young Justice game, that'd be dope, too. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be Young Justice because that's not a brand that's, like, super well-known. It'd be it'd be Teen Titans, uh, if anything. Teen Titans video game? Okay. Can we do a lineup? Okay, okay so... For... <laughs> are we doing a draft, or you just say, like, your your dream lineup? Dream lineup, and I think we should also do our Bat Family game lineup. Okay, so let's let's do the Bat Family thing real quick. We're running long, and I want to get to the news story. So let's do Bat Batman lineup first. Let's do four or five. What do you want to do the cutoff at? A number of five. Five. Okay, so mine. Well, okay, you got Batman as one, and then four others. Okay. Okay, so Batman, uh, Batgirl for me. Uh, I would do Nightwing, Tim Drake. And Batwoman. Batwoman doesn't hang with Batman all that much. Yeah, but it's it's Bat Family, so I think that would be an interesting piece in the story too. Is that he's not one of the, the other three would be the ones like consulting, trying to figure out what the hell's going on with Batman, and you would actually run into Nightwing and be like, "Hey, dude, Bruce Wayne's missing," and he's like, "Who cares?" And that's kind of like the story arc there of him. Like, he starts off as like, "I don't care what's happening with Bruce, whatever," and then yeah, as sure. the story unfolds, it's like, "Oh, you know, he kind has to kind of give a shit depending on what happens." Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So yeah, it'd be it'd be Bruce, obviously Nightwing, Tim Drake, Robin. Uh, Cause I'm I'm not a huge fan of Damien. I'd rather go Tim over Damien. Uh, Batwoman and Batgirl. I would like to have both, um, just because. Damn. Yeah. That'd be so, mine. So I'm all about um, Damien now. He's really grown on me, and his Robin suit is the best Robin suit, bar none, all day. With the fucking cape and the hood, it's cool as shit. And especially with him coming from Assassin Roots, and it's more tactical. Uh, the stuff, you know, the actual stuff on his body, like his boots and his gloves. Oh, it's so fucking great. So, uh, Damian Wayne's actually uh, my dude, and uh, hasn't always been that way, but he'd definitely be in my Bat Family game. So you got Batman, Damian... Uh, Robin, and then I would probably go. I would definitely go Batwoman, and then uh, I was debating I Red Hood too, man. I really like Red Hood. See, that's the thing is like, I get sad when Jason Todd's all angry, which <laughs> yeah. is always yeah. But just sometimes he teams up, so it's like, let's do a storyline where Red Hood's finally playing cool. You know, and so Red Hood's fucking awesome. So if it was Red Hood and Damien, Robin, and uh, Batwoman, obviously Batwoman, yeah, and then probably someone a little more obscure because, like in the detect- Detective Comics, it's a team series right now, mostly Bat Family. There's Batwoman, 
Uh, there's uh, Tim Drake kind of doing the Robin thing you weren't liking where he's like a adult Robin. Yeah. Um, which is like just you read Robin. Um, and then there's Spoiler who's like his girlfriend and there's uh, Orphan who um, is kind of like a Black Widow situation. Okay. And then there's Clayface. Uh, so I might choose like Orphan. Spoiler's not quite there for me. Orphan's really cool, but she's pretty obscure, so... Um, uh, I guess she's... Like, technically, in the comics, she's Bat Family. I'm not going into that whole backstory, but... Um, uh, the two-girl situation, I like the whole Batgirl situation, but I also like uh, Batgirl solo. Yeah. So, um, I'd be down with, like, a Tim Drake Red Robin situation. Oh, but that's three Robins? Ah. Oh, okay. I'm throwing Luke Fox in there. Hell yeah. And I'm going with Batwing, which is, like, basically the Iron Bat. Um, he's also a detective comic, so, yeah. So, Titans team, we'll do six. Let's go a little quick so we can get to the Microsoft story. Yeah, I went way deep on that one, so. <laughs> it's fine. Titans so is easy. I'll give my six. So, uh, the first are easy. Uh, Robin, uh, uh, Dick Grayson Robin from Young Justice, Wally West, Superboy. Those are my first three. Um, oh, Miss okay. Uh, are you doing Connor Kent or Jonathan Kent? Connor Kent. I really love the interpretation of Superboy in, in Young Justice. Uh, For sure. Miss Martian. So, that's four from Young Justice. Uh, uh, She's great. Yeah, Hello, Raven. Hello, Megan. Hello, Megan. Raven for me. Um, I really like Raven a lot. Nice. Raven's and great. the sixth position is hard for me, so I'm gonna do a fifty-fifty split. Season one is one of them, and season two gets replaced by the other one. Um, I'll say season one is Beast Boy, and then Word. he gets replaced by Blue Beetle. Um, Blue fucking Beetle, man. I'm about it. Jaime Reyes is like. I have this whole thing of, like, DC needs to make a Blue Beetle movie because he's essentially DC Spider-Man. Like, I have a whole thing I can go into for yeah. for hours he's, and hours about it. He's the Iron Spider. Uh, well, and just his, as a character, right? The kid learning to come into his own. I think that yeah. he brings the levity that the DC universe desperately needs. That's why I love the Shazam sure. trailer. I don't want to get into a tangent about that. But, yeah, those are my six. Shazam was cool. So... Uh, what was it? It was uh, Dick Grayson, Kid Flash, Superboy, um, Megan, Miss Martian, uh, Raven, and Beast Boy Hello, slash Blue Beetle. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the new team because in the Teen Titans animated series, they're never clear about who it is. It's probably Dick Grayson. But once again, I'd like it to be Tim Drake because I'd like to imagine that there's a Nightwing in the Teen Titans animated series universe. Yeah, um, that's why I love that Young Justice is like, oh, it's a Dick Grayson, <laughs> you know. Like, but then there's no me. Nightwing, you know. It's like we can have our Robins and our Nightwings too, you know. Uh, ah, right? oh, I could desperately say something, but I don't want to say anything. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go with a New Age uh, Teen Titans. Okay. Because right now you got Damian Wayne. Running the Teen Titans as Robin. I'm loving it. I'm down with it. And then I'm going to throw a Superboy in there. Jonathan Kent, son of Lois and Clark. The true son. And <laughs> the true son. And he has such a cool suit. He's only 10 years old. So we're probably waiting to have him in the comics for a while. But You're also um, going really like young. F- Off the your top yeah, two picks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Uh... But Jonathan kind of, like, fucks with the Titans sometimes, the Teen Titans, I should say. And, uh, like I said, I like his suit. It's like a, a hoodie that has a cape that has the S yeah. on the chest. So it's so fucking cool. So, And then he just wears jeans and cool shoes. So That's um, two down, all about four more. Jonathan Kent. And, uh, okay, so, yeah, we got younger kids, so then I'm going to do... Kind of the thing that they have in the New 52 universe, which is where, or this animated universe I've been watching, which is Starfire's kind of older. She's dating Nightwing. 
So, and I'm going to put Starfire in fucking charge. And Damien's going to throw a fit. That'll be part of the storyline <laughs> and all that bullshit. Uh, but Starfire is awesome, and she's going to be in charge. Um, oh, I have a tangent, but I'm going to keep going. It's so great. I'll talk about it at the end. Uh, but yeah, Starfire, and then... Um, I'm not going to put Cyborg in here. I'm going to say Beast Boy, but I will say that Cyborg is uh, way better when he's doing Teen Titans stuff. I think he's just not great in Justice League. I'm not the movie Justice League, the comic Justice League. I'm just not really about it. I've never liked the character, which is funny because like, on paper I should love him like a former football star, you know what I mean, turned like Cyborg. I just never liked the character personally. I'm I do like him in Teen Titans him, though. Dude, he just needs to stay a Titan, and or a Teen Titan at least, and then, because uh, he's, he's got to be like forever a teenager, right? Because he's got so much of his body lost. Yeah. How does that work? Who knows? I don't uh, know. You have he's, two more slots. Like you don't part... have a single person from Young Justice, and that breaks my heart. From Young Justice. Uh, you don't have uh, to. I'm not. I'm not trying to push you into a corner. I'm just saying you have four out of the six, and it's surprising to me that you don't have. Breaks your places. heart. I have. I have versions of those characters. I have Robin and Superboy. Exactly, but they're not the Young Justice, you know, guys. Okay, so um, I also don't want to do Artemis. I do. I want to do. Well, no, Arsenal. He calls himself Red Arrow, right? In Young yeah. Justice season one. Yes, dude. He's on the fucking team. Uh, and he technically uh, joins the team, uh, so, yeah. Spoilers, bro. Uh, oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. He's yeah. all punky, uh, but he wouldn't be like that in the game. And he would be going as uh, probably Arsenal, because I think that's his proper name, even though it should be Red Arrow. But really, I think his, his name's Arsenal. I wish... He looks terrible in the Titans comic right now. He looks like an Under Armour commercial. It <laughs> sucks. Uh, but he looks pretty straight in uh, Young Justice. So. And your last uh, member, the team. who is making the, the cut? Team. So, um, dude, I think I'm going to go with Raven. She's oh, yeah. a classic Team Titans uh, member. And she's like... Uh, I guess I could look up what's happening with her in like the whole DC uh, rebirth comic situation, uh, but I know she's not really involved. She's had her own like mini series, but they're totally outside of the continuity, and so I'm thinking that um, she's definitely in need of you know some attention and some um, gameplay or whatever because Raven's fucking awesome. Well, and for me, the, the reason I chose Miss Martian and, and Raven is because I think you needed to have that balance. And, like, I think yeah. Raven totally pulls in one direction where Miss Martian definitely pulls in another. It's the same reason Miss Martian and Starfire are actually really fucking similar. Yeah. Um, I'm more of a fan, personally, of Miss Martian. But I did love Starfire watching Teen Titans. It could just be that, like, I've most recently watched Young Justice, so I, I'm, I really love Miss Martian, but... Um, so, I'm just going to say it. I read Kingdom Come, and I really like Nightfire, which is in their universe, Dick Grayson and Starfire's son. Or yeah. Daughter. Yeah. And uh, she's really fucking cool. Actually, um, she could be on the team if it wasn't. If it was like a Justice League 3000 situation. That'd be dope. So those are our lists, our rosters for our Bat Family and our Teen Titans games. Um, let's hop awesome. into the news. Give it we're, to us. we're like 50 minutes in, we're getting to the only news story. It's fine. It was a slow news week. But it's a very interesting story. I kind of uh, sucks that Dom isn't here, but whatever. So by Brad Sams over at Thoreau.com, um, they're a website known for, for getting rumors and, and speculation about Microsoft and Xbox right a lot of the time. So people are taking this with more than a grain of salt. Um, he basically broke that Xbox uh, Scarlet, the, the the new device, the new piece of hardware that's being developed that Phil Spencer talked about at E3, is actually two separate pieces of hardware. Uh, one of them will be the traditional console we've come to expect. Underline that, cool, right? You're getting the Xbox you want. The next Xbox you want, the traditional one, boom, it's actually being made. Don't worry about it. But there's actually going to be a second piece of hardware where things get really intriguing. It's said to be a streaming device that is meant to work hand-in-hand -hand with the company's upcoming streaming platform. That streaming platform is Scarlet Cloud. 
Uh, that's the code name. It's uh, a streaming service that's intrigued people since 2013 when it was shown off at an all-employee meeting. So this is something that's been in the works for a long time. This is some real-ass shit right now. Yeah. Um, so the streaming console is also <laughs> said to be a low, uh, lower-powered, but apparently Microsoft feels they've figured out how to handle latency. The console would have some local computing for handling specific tasks, such as controller input, image processing, and collision detection. Uh, the second console that the company is working on is a lower power device that is currently planned to ship with the next generation device that is designed for game streaming, so alongside it. Um, but the catch here is that Microsoft thinks that it has figured out how to handle the late... I guess I wrote that twice. Sorry about that. Um, Hold on, though. Can we talk about how they're going to handle, like, 4K situations? I don't think this game will... I don't think the streaming thing will do 4K. Right. And yeah. then, but then your underpowered version is... How are they going to handle 4K? No, no, no. I think the I think the traditional console will do 4K. I don't think the streaming one okay. will do 4K is what I'm saying. We'll get into that in the so discussion. So it'll be like the traditional one will be like better than a 1X? Who knows? I will get into that conversation. Let me finish up here real quick. So the, um, the portion of the game that runs locally, some have referred to as a slice or splice, means that the game is running in two locations at the same time and utilizes Microsoft's cloud Ooh. to stitch it all together. Uh, the benefit here is that Microsoft's cloud platform reaches around the globe with data centers in every major market. This makes streaming the game platform available glo globally, but this also likely means that it can run on any type of device. Of course, Microsoft would love you to buy their hardware, but the company's end goal is that you can access Xbox from any device, anywhere, and Scarlet Cloud is looking to deliver on this idea. So, the thing is, is that for traditional gamers, you're getting the console you want, great. That's what you need to hear, right? The people who don't want to deal no. with streaming... I think that is a great place to start because you have the box you want. You don't have to deal with any of this. Now, the people who are more intrigued about this idea, I think it's great. Uh, we can get into it. I think the idea of a stream-only console is great for a number of factors. One, if you're a PlayStation 4-only person, this is a very cheap way to get into the Xbox ecosystem. Very cheap, right? So instead of buying... It obviously depends on what you want out of your video games, but if you buy a PS5 at launch and you still want to get into the Xbox ecosystem, you don't have to spend another $400. You could potentially spend between $100 and $200, depending on where this drops, um, or nothing at all if it launches as a service as well on your PC. Um, I do think this is an interesting idea. I do think the way they're going to pitch this is that when we do get this reveal event before E3, because they don't reveal consoles at E3, they reveal them beforehand, usually a month or two, a couple of months, depends. Um, I do think I do think they're going to lead with the traditional console. I think it's going to all going to be about what you can expect from the Xbox you were expecting, right? What are the new things? What is the price point? What are you getting out of this? What's different? I think they're going to handle all of that. What to expect when you're expecting? Exactly. And I do think after that they're going to be like, for those of you who are maybe looking for a different experience, uh, a more affordable experience, because they would never say cheaper on stage, a more affordable solution. Uh, for all the peasants in the crowd. We're handling this streaming service, and then they'll go into that. And I would really be surprised if they spend a whole lot of time at E3 on the streaming version. I do think that's going to be the one that they pitch at the the reveal event more. And when it comes to E3, they're going to tout the traditional one and mention the streaming one. But I do think the traditional one will get the majority of the limelight. I do think this is yeah. basically Xbox being like, here's what you guys want. Here's something we're trying alongside of it, you know. Weird. What's the latency no. stuff is really interesting. Like, what do you, what are your thoughts on this rumor? Also, it's rumored that they're both coming out in 2020. That's an additional point that I didn't uh, put out there. Word. Yeah. Um, probably spring 2020. That makes some sense. Uh, so I gotta say, latency I think will be ironed out. Like I said before the show, I think. Uh, I played all the way through God of War Ascension and did not have that many issues. I mean, it really was not that bad. And I think a lot of people are playing on an internet connection like me that is just, you know, really solid. They live in a populated area. Sure, there's rural areas where it's tough to game, but if you're playing in a place like that, just don't stream games. I think that's very obvious, you know. So, other than that, I would also say... Um, I don't know. This, it definitely sounds real, but it's like, <clears throat> this whole, it feels like we're about to jump into a generation of, uh, you know, consoles that are streaming boxes, and, uh, 
I want them to have a little bit of computing power like they do, but what I'm not hearing, and you know I'm all about this, Jared, I want them to be modular. Yeah, and here's the thing is that we also heard back in 2013 that um, there was going to be something like this launching alongside the Xbox One and that never happened. Just because these consoles are in development doesn't mean that it'll see the light of day. This could be something that's just a prototype. It could be as they come closer to wanting to release, maybe they just stick with the traditional one and we don't see this at launch, right? To assume that this is going to launch alongside it could happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will happen, you know? Who's to say? Um, but yeah, the, the idea of modular consoles is interesting. I don't know. I think uh, 2020 release date makes complete sense. I do think the Xbox, the next Xbox, will release uh, before the PlayStation 5. For me, it's a lot easier seeing the next Xbox launch in 2020, whereas with the PlayStation, that becomes a lot harder considering all of the games that have been said to be PS4 games that have no release date in sight. So it's like, for me, a 2020... To tell me that, say, Last of Us Part Two launches in spring of 2020, and then the PS5 launches that fall... It's kind of weird to me. It could happen, but um, I don't know. It's yeah. It's interesting. I, I could definitely see Xbox having a year uh, ahead of them in terms of release. The other part is going to be like, because the Xbox One X is so powerful, um, I don't think we'll see necessarily a huge jump in terms of raw power. I think for what I assume when we get the next Xboxes uh, and the next PlayStation is I think they're looking at stability right so i don't think we need to necessarily pump up the graphics anymore or anything like that once you pump hit 4k the i think their focus is hitting 60 locked um though that's not a huge thing for me i want to see 60 would be great i want to see uh jumps in artificial intelligence and a lot of other aspects of gaming i'm not the graphics guy like lock 60 honestly is a no a no news announcement for me personally like that's just something I don't care about obviously I would I'll appreciate the benefits but somebody goes on yeah, stage but, and the difference to me I between 4k like 30 and 4k 60 means nothing to me if I'm being quite honest I would just I would really like it to start being the standard with this next generation is all I'm saying yeah and I mean that's everyone has their own taste and what they want out of things like for me like I said 4k 30 and 4k 60 be... does nothing for me I really don't sure, care. I'm not saying it should be the the main feature of this next gen, but I would really like it if it were the standard. Yeah. Like, you know how we got to HD, and now we've gotten to HD, uh, full HD, 1080p, 30 frames, and then now we're getting 4K games. It's like, if we could just get up there to 4K 60 for the next gen, that would be super solid. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I personally want improvements elsewhere. Um, oh, me too, me too. I think that's the, the most sellable upgrade, though, is saying that. Um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very interesting in terms of price point and when the ships um, modular would be very interesting. I do think, as cool of an idea as that is, I do think we still are maybe a little too uh, early on that in terms of the people who buy consoles. I think if you're looking at a PC audience, I think they'd be a lot more comfortable with it. But I think the general console user, I think, would still be confused no matter how easy you made it, unfortunately. Um, it's yeah. the the tough thing um, is that like with with 4K 60 um, I just don't know I, I understand there's an audience that really wants that I just don't I don't want that to be the feature that they focus on entirely you know like if that's announced I hope it's alongside other vast improvements I don't want the crux of it being 4K 60 locked, and that's the selling point for both consoles, and that's like what they stick to. It's like, cool, what else? You know what I mean? For me, it'd be a letdown. So I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, this doesn't yeah. doesn't do anything for me. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. Do you have anything else to say about the Scarlet rumor? I think obviously there's not a whole lot to go off of. The streaming thing is interesting, but we'll see if it actually comes to fruition. I think in the coming months we'll probably hear yeah. more. Yeah, I think. Uh Sounds about right to me. Especially with that meeting. That's what got me. Yeah. The meeting from like 2013 about the <laughs> streaming service. Yeah, and then I, Satya Nadella from Microsoft saying that they've posted, Xbox has posted $10 billion in, in, in earnings for the first time ever. And people like to sit here and say, oh, they're losing the console war. They're, they're, 
Microsoft's gonna sell Xbox. <laughs> they yeah. just posted ten million dollars yeah. in profits. Um, in terms of what we're gonna just be Xbox specifically did. Yeah, Xbox the Xbox division. Oh, Microsoft cool. made way more than ten billion dollars. That's like for sure. That's like chump change. Because like uh, Phil Spencer's head of gaming, right? He's head of gaming at Microsoft, but he still is head of Xbox as well. If that makes sense. Gotcha. So, like, he handles, like, their AR and VR stuff for Microsoft, but he is still the head of Noise. Xbox. Um, in terms of what we're going to be playing, diving back into Octopath Traveler, I purchased Mega Man X Collection as well on the Switch, so I'll be diving into that as well. Um, what else? Uh, Mission Impossible comes out this weekend. Going to probably be starting nice. Young Justice Season 2. Uh, Noise. And I'm debating whether or not I want to... Uh, what is it? I'm either debating starting up Godless or something. I can't remember the other series. Um, st- start watching. I can't. I don't, what was it? I can't remember the other series. But it's either Godless, which is like the Western series on Netflix, uh, or right. something else. Um, Have you seen Ozark? No, uh, Ozark is on that list too of things I I want to try to get to. Uh, Godless is all right. I I think it's one of those ones that you should honestly skip. There's even better Western series out there. Um, just because you're not watching enough TV series for that series to matter to you. Does that make sense? Like, That's my thing with Ozark, though, is, like, I'm not, like, I didn't like Breaking Bad. And I know it's different. But I think this, yeah, I think this will work for you. And that's a series that you really want to see. Like, Godless is okay. If you're someone who's, like, super into fucking TV, it'd be cool if you'd seen that. But, like... I think you should definitely go with Ozark. My other thing with Godless is it was produced in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is, that's like, cool. an hour from me, so it's, like, that's pretty interesting. I do like now, the cast, what too. what you should so. watch, which was also produced, I think, in Santa Fe, uh, is the new Coen Brothers Netflix series. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, their new... S- that would be worth your time. I don't think that's come out yet. Has it? No, 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 whenever it comes out. It's not a series anymore. It turned into a movie. Jeez. I'm Ballad of Buster Scruggs these... or whatever? I think that's what it is. There's too many of these Netflix movies. There's too much Netflix shit, but I would say go with Ozark. I don't think there's too much. It's pick and choose. It's just like cable. True, Make what you but watch. Like, there's a lot of Netflix movies. There's a lot of Netflix movies. Coming there's a lot of shows too, man. There's some real clunkers in there in terms of original series yeah. for Netflix as well. Yeah. Um, you just need to the cut those episode numbers down. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, last la- last chance use only eight episodes, so it's like right there. That's Perfect. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Godless, I think, is seven, so that's cool. Yeah. Ozark is pretty short. It's not more than two. Are episodes. all the Marvel series need to be cut down by like two episodes? Yep. Yeah. Well, they need to be at eight or ten, and Defenders at eight was a lot better. Also, we need Vincent D'Onofrio on the MCU. Like, I love him in the Daredevil seasons. Like. And he's yeah, actually an actor that bullshit, can... fuck this bullshit, dude! Hey, <laughs> fuck this! Whole MCU divide. I'm not about it. But the thing is, is he's one of the few actors, like, no shots at anybody else in the in the Marvel and Netflix series. Yeah. He's an actor that has been in Hollywood productions. Like, he can make that jump, you know what I mean? Hashtag MCU apartheid is what <laughs> this is. Like, I would love this to see bullshit. Vincent D'Onofrio acting... Across from like a young Dude, Tom Holland, that'd be so about dope. Hollywood actors, fucking Sigourney Weavers and the Defenders. There's all kinds of actors that should be on the big screen in the MCU. Fuck this bullshit, dude. Daredevil <laughs> not in Infinity War uh, sucks. I don't think. Yeah, hearing from that actor though, I don't think he's like. I don't think he's the type of person that would want to commit to like long contracts and stuff. You know, Charlie Cox. He's the way he's, he's spoken about stuff. It just doesn't seem like that while, type of dude. Now. It's been how many years has it been since Daredevil season one? Now he's done. Well, it's been like of that show. It's been three years since seasons two, right? Or two years since season two? Yeah. No, it's been two seasons of Daredevil and, and Defenders. Defenders. So, like, he's basically done three seasons now, and it's been way more than three years. So, uh, probably about five or six now. Let's get so. Andrew Lincoln in something. Considering they want to just k- kick him off of Walking Dead, dude. I like Andrew Lincoln a lot. I mean, yeah, sure. Um, I'm all about that. Yeah. Anyways, that's all I've been going to be playing. And uh, comics and stuff, too. I don't want to go too long because we're already running late. What about you, Jern? So, um, 
Definitely continuing Young Justice. Uh, I shouted out Kingdom Come earlier, Jared. I really enjoyed that comic. Oh, I love um, it so much. I read it this year too, man. It's so good. It's really... The art style is fucking cool. I think Alex Ross, if I'm correct. Yeah. Is the guy's name. And I'm getting into his stuff. My desktop background is uh, basically the Avengers uh, with that same art style from Kingdom Come. Uh, like old school Black Panther, Hawkeye, Cap, Namor? Uh, Iron Man. No, it's Thor. And... Um, Vision, uh, and uh, Wasp, and Scarlet Witch. Hell yeah. But I love King of Gun. Yeah. Uh, is it okay? Do you want me to close out the show? Hold on one sec. Okay. Sorry, I had to step away from my microphone. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I really enjoyed Kingdom Come. That art, art style is fucking awesome. Um, and I'll also be besides Young Justice. Um, I've also been watching Justice League, um, the animated series, of course. And uh, going back and forth between those two is awesome. Young Justice has so much Justice League in it. Haven't you yeah. noticed that? Yeah, like there's, there's a lot the of Justice Batman. Is all yeah. up in there. Yeah. So, um, really enjoying jumping back and forth between those two. And I might even start doing the same with Teen Titans because uh, that's a good thing to talk about. I'll probably be going to see Teen Titans Go this weekend. Um, Me too. That movie looks I fun. Don't... Screw people who are like super yeah. salty about it. I think okay, it looks fun. Okay, so several reasons I'm going to go see that movie. One... Uh, I'm all about the Teen Titans, as we've clearly covered this episode. Uh, two, I'm not a hater of Go, Teen Titans Go, and, yes, uh, what's her name, Starfire, um, oh, I should know her name, because she does a lot of voices, she does Harley Quinn, you know what I'm talking about? Tara uh, Strong? No, that's not it. Yeah, Tara Strong, okay. yeah, Tara yeah. Strong said that if a bunch of people go see Teen Titans Go, they'll bring back the original Teen Titans series. Which I think is a total reality situation. Like, we need to bring back the original Teen Titans series. Um, so that's another reason I'm going to see this movie, to be quite honest. Like, screw Young Justice getting cancelled after two seasons, man. Screw that. Hey, it, that, that's what I'm saying. It's being brought back, dude. <laughs> yeah. We're getting season three this fall. So I'm all about uh, OG Teen Titans coming back, and so that's part of the reason I'm going to see that movie. But it just, yeah, like you said, it's... I'm hearing good things. Like the said, trailers have been genuinely show. funny. I hate that shit. Like, people like to hate on it. It ain't some Big Bang Theory bullshit. Like, the trailers for Teen Titans <laughs> Go to the Movies is actually really interesting and really funny. So, yeah. I'm, I'm down. I'm with you I on that. I feel you. Um, yeah. That's been it for episode 104 of the Controlled Interest Gamecast. If you can, please subscribe to us on YouTube. It definitely helps. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, at C-T-R-L-I-N-T, that's Controlled Interest Abbreviated. You can follow Jordan at Mellow Modus. I am at Jared underscore, because I still can't get my name, because people don't use their Twitter for three years, and they don't get oh, no. you know, oh, removed, no. and I can't get it, so I'm just stuck here with an underscore like a pleb. Um, you can follow Dom, who's not with us, at Dom's Oreos. Um, yeah, leave us a review on iTunes. It definitely helps the show grow. Next week, we should have everybody back. Um, we might even have a guest, uh, depending on who I can wrangle up. Um, maybe somebody from OK Beast or something like that. Uh, yeah, but we'll catch nice. you guys next week in episode 105. Bye.